Welcome back to Lost in Rosha, the ultimate journey through the Stormlight Archive. I'm congested Christian Kremling. And I am Jimmy, no longer sick with COVID Stormblast. Today we are diving into chapters three and four of Wind in Truth. These are the pre-release chapters. So if you don't want to know anything about book five, you need to get out of here. But for everyone else, welcome to the Thunderdome of Theories this is going to be a really fun episode because we got a bunch of stuff get dropped in these. It's been kind of wild uh, seeing Cosmere references this early in a book. It's uh, almost a little overwhelming even at times. But uh, Christian, you're why, why are you congested? What happened? Oh, man, I got I got a massive cold. I almost couldn't record. Dang. It was bad. I was like, I couldn't get through a sentence without coughing or spluttering. Uh, but now it's somewhat doable. I just have to mute my mic every now and then. Um but it's given me time to uh, mull over these chapters in a fever, uh, fever-like dream state, which uh, is the best for creating unhinged theories. Uh, but you're feeling better this week? I am. I, I think I'm about 90%. Like, I'm still getting tired, like, during workouts and stuff a little bit faster than I was before. Uh, but infinitely better than I was, like, 10 days ago where I was, like, literally, like, you know, confined to my couch canceling events and uh very lonely so yeah. glad to be feeling better hope you feel better soon man thanks man um oh, dude these chapters like they didn't really hold back i mean i i don't know if there's a sanderson update we need to go through first or we just jump straight he's just in, playing right? elden ring he went live right when we started recording <laughs> uh, that's about it yeah the man who doesn't level up his character just levels up his gameplay what a chat respect as someone who just like gave up on Elden Ring to see someone like not even put their runes into leveling up I can't even like understand <laughs> I just don't understand the rabbit hole's gone deep I'm about to start my first uh, rune level one build and right. uh, see if I can get to beat the game I've been in speed runs and I'm you know generous I, I'm being generous with the word speed but you know, I'm beating yeah. the game under 10 hours that's pretty good uh, and I did new game plus and beat the entire game in like three hours which was pretty good so now I'm thinking wow. about doing a rune level one where you stay at level one the entire time. And hey, maybe I'll be Kaladin Stormblast and I'll pick up a spear. Maybe I'll do it. <laughs> that would be cool. I think you're it just going to be guts, though. I don't know. Bro. Well, <laughs> yeah, I I usually cosplay as guts in video games. This is true. However, some of the DLC stuff they had in Elden Ring is so anime. It's ridiculous. Really? Oh, bro. It's literally the most anime stuff you've ever seen. Like it's. It's over the th to the point where I'm like, maybe we scale that back a little bit. Like, maybe we don't need <laughs> flying like lightning strike twirls and jumping from heaven and summoning. Oh, rocks. wow. OK. Oh, well, it's it's out of control. Sounds like Stormlight, to be honest. A bit. Yeah, yeah. it's high <laughs> fantasy, high fantasy stuff, which is really cool. They actually added in martial arts, which was pretty dope. Like you can like spinning kick the boss in the head and stuff. It's pretty sick. Whoa. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose on the topic of games, we, just a shout out to all the all the game masters who who messaged us and said yeah. they wanted to, to host a Lost in Rosha Cosmere RPG campaign. I was I was like, okay, maybe one person. We'll hear from one person. There was like five people who were like, yeah, really? and not just like a hey, we like these games, we'd like to help. I mean, we're talking about people sending very thoughtful, thought out, like, hey, I will do this, 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 and this. So shout out to you guys. One thing I do know, you know, as readers, we're very passionate about what we do. But I think if there's anybody that's more passionate, it's tabletop gamers. Like I, <laughs> yeah, I've been around them when I was playing Magic the Gathering. You know, in the shop, I'd see guys coming in with the rulers with Warhammer figurines, and I'm like, well, at least I'm not, at least I'm not that far <laughs> down the rabbit hole because Magic wasn't cheap, but Warhammer was more expensive than that um but tabletop uh you know players or gamers are just so passionate about what they do so we we appreciate everyone wanting us to have a good time when it comes to playing the rpg and hey who knows maybe in the future we will maybe hey we got we got to do something for the five-year gap or 10-year gap <laughs> like it was just <laughs> we do a 10-year <laughs> campaign <laughs> yeah i saw like a video on like the longest D, D campaign um ever ever like ongoing and it's been going for like 40 years or something. I'm and sorry like, at that point. We I'm weeped out. when my, my character died. I weeped for a week. You know, it's serious business. Um, I'm That's intrigued crazy. by it. I will say I am intrigued. Um, oh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. And we got a lot of good bingo cards. Maybe we should like read through one of those uh, before we get into the chapters because they're pretty great. We got a, quite a few. Uh, shout out to anyone who sent it in. Uh, definitely got to give a big shout out uh, to Brooklyn 
And we also had another bingo card come in from Cody. Cody, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and then there, there might have been actually a couple other ones that I'm missing here. Uh, we get an absurd amount of emails. for. It's actually kind of shocking how many people want to like reach out and stuff. So we do appreciate it. Um, but for instance, on Brooklyn's card, she has Shalon's mom is Shanarak confirmed. Shalon meets her mom. That's that's an interesting. Oh, yeah. Right. Kaladin swears fifth ideal, a death rattle from uh, Way of Kings or Words of Radiance makes sense now, which we <laughs> did get. Yeah. <laughs> Already take it off. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I'm sure that the uh, first two also come there. Night of Sars begins. Um, we also have Gavilar statue is awakened. This one's for Jimmy. Appreciate you. <laughs> uh, Shalon and Aylin get in a fight. What we most likely will need to do, and maybe we'll do this on the next episode, is maybe we'll take the, the both bingo cards and see which card actually ends up winning first. That would be kind of cool, mm-hmm. wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, that would be really fun. And then Cody sent one in, and it's like legit a oh, google shit where like, you can move it around name. i mean <laughs> it's, it, it's this guy's a wizard with an excel i bet uh shallan's <laughs> mom is a herald baby champion ishar is odium's champion that's kind of a cool one mm. sus kremlings which i'm a big fan of uh go to ashen <laughs> that's also definitely Ooh. a spicy one i would say moash dies Ooh, that could be cool i, I don't know i think moash is gonna have a redemption arc personally Man. i feel like sanderson's just too nice like he's gonna try to bring it all back around right yeah potentially for moash the stormlight's all about uh forgiveness and healing right but i don't yeah. know man i think I also know. there's a chance that we're gonna see like odium conquered at the end of book five and then maybe like the epilogue will be moash taking up the mantle or something like that nah no nah. nah. we just you don't think so okay ridge has got a lot of work to do man He's been building yeah. up to this his whole life. Give me some more Terravangian. <laughs> oh, okay? seriously. Give me some more of that. I want Dalinar and Terravangian. You know, it's nice to be with Kaladin and Shalon, but honestly, the first thing that I got like... real excited about was seeing Dalinar. <laughs> I was like, all right. Yeah. He's here. I want senior point of views only. I want mm-hmm. 50 years plus only point of views for the rest of this <laughs> book. <laughs> yeah, we want AARP. <laughs> Ready to retire. <laughs> POVs. Um, yeah, so I don't think we have many centers updates. And just a big shout out to the community and people reaching out to us. It's always awesome to uh, to connect and also just to see people so excited about book five and obviously Lost in Roshar in general. Also, shout out to people who uh, who give us uh, props on Reddit. That always leads to more listens and stuff. So we really yeah, do appreciate that. Thank you. The last episode was pretty massive numbers. wise. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it because as the, the loud minority who's like, oh, I don't want to read the preview chapters yet. I'll come back once the book is out which is fair was, yeah it's totally fair and i was kind of like mentally preparing for the podcast to maybe go down by like a third of people and then last week's episode was just absolutely massive so many new people coming in um just the hype of the new book i think and i went yeah. pretty bloody hard on that thumbnail i was like i'm making an absolute banger of a thumbnail for this episode <laughs> the My- double feature <laughs> bro you have always went hard <laughs> I always get so I always get so excited when you're like, "Hey man, can you like make me a thumbnail for this video?" Bro, you can make all my thumbnails. I would (laughs) I would be relieved if you did that. Honestly, I suck at them. (laughs) I love it, but yeah, man, it's the podcast is going well, and uh, when the truth is off to a blistering pace of a start. So you read yeah chapters one and two in the interim that I talked about with Jake. Yeah, and I wanted to point something out, and I don't know if you and Jake pointed this out. I don't remember hearing you guys say it, but it's interesting that wind. (laughs) <clears throat> it said that it's tickling Kaladin uh, right at the beginning of, I think it's chapter one. <clears throat> I thought that was pretty interesting considering the fact that by the end of those chapters or these chapters, we sit there and we say, oh, wind is personified. Like the, mm. the wind is an actual thing. Mm. And then it made me think back, Christian, and we're going to take a little victory lap here oh. about <laughs> just how right we were about. <laughs> So many things in the way of Kings. We talked about how the uh, it almost felt like there was a voice on the wind and it kind of spoke to Kaladin in the chasm. Me and Christian were talking about it. We're saying, well, that's not Syl. Like, this is obviously not Syl. And we, you know, all the haters, haters will say it was Syl. Uh, Turns out we were on to something. And another really big one is the fact that whenever Kaladin uh, and his spear have a moment, 
Oh, me and Christian said, man, this spear feels like it's more than just a spear laying on the ground. Like he could feel it and hear it. And uh, we also get a little I think it was in chapters three and four today. Um, we hear that everything on Roshar is alive. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's been so many hints of that for so long with Shades Mar and all the objects and the beads and stuff. But like this extra voice we picked up on. Um, man, the, the extra voice scene, I've got to pull this up because it was one of the things that we were like, what, what's like, what's going on there? And we never were able to figure it out. Um, oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, here we go. Chapter 43. I'm going to pull this up because when I, like, this was the first thing I thought about as the wind is taking more of a, um, a front seat in this story. Let me see. Chapter 43. I'll edit this if I have to. I oh, know you're good. Okay, here we go. Nobody cared for the bridgeman. Nobody cared for those at the bottom with the darkest eyes. And yet the wind seemed to whisper to him over and over. Life before death. Life before death. Live before you die. Mates. Mm. Mates. And also Hello. going to die. Interesting. Yes. And I will, I will link a pretty good post on um, in an awesome post on Reddit, um, where someone's combined all the sus wind moments from the Way of Kings till now. Some it's There's like, yeah, some are a little like, it, okay, yeah, wind, wind was mentioned, um, but others you're like, oh yeah, this is quite significant, um, and one of those significant ones, um, I think it's from. Oathbringer, yeah, Oathbringer chapter six, where he's talking to Syl and she goes, um, she landed in the air before him and became a young woman. Besides, there was another voice, pure with a song like tapped crystal, distant yet demanding. She smiled and zipped away. Huge. Huge. So this wind, whatever it is, has been talking to Cal for quite a bit. It has been. Yeah, uh, and the song, and now he has a flute. There is some weird stuff going on in Roshar. I mean, we even hear at this point that Roshar itself may be alive. The planet. Yeah, because like, I mean, we'll get into it in the chapters, I suppose. But like, maybe we'll maybe we'll save it for the chapters. There's yeah, a maybe lot of we, can, we can jump into it. I really just wanted to gloat the fact that we picked up on this in the Way of Kings reread. And turns out that we, maybe we were, everyone says, you know, we're off our rock. <laughs> tinfoil this, tinfoil that. Well, now look at you. Look at you, eating weird words. <laughs> Let's take a look back at the top ten moments lost in Roshar predicted wind and truth. <laughs> oh. Just us being incredibly based and correct. No, but I also, I let's not count all the times I've been wrong. Okay, so <laughs> chapter three is called "The Cost of Heroism." Now, what do you make of this little, uh, little chapter heading here, bud? Hmm? Oh, this, this little guy with the front friend, fringe. Right? Oh, I mean, it's Patton. I mean, it's always it's just Patton, isn't it? That's oh, it. is that the same one that's been there for a while? Yep. <laughs> it's been All right. Well, it. moving on from there. Uh, the wind told me before she vanished that it was the change in Odium's vessel that restored her voice. I wonder, perhaps it is the new storm making people begin to reconsider that the wind is not their enemy from Nights and Winds and Truth, page three. So interesting. It's page three in chapter three. Is this chapter going to be a page or, or what is it? There's a lot right here. Okay. Me and you are probably on the same page. We think this is most likely Kaladin, but I've seen other people talking that it could be uh, Mishram. Uh, I, the wind capital told me, you know, we're going to get a lot more about that. Also, Knights of Wind and Truth starting to feel like maybe hmm. someone is going to lift someone up. And in this chapter, you know, I'm thinking Knights of Wind and Truth. Like, there's going to be Knights of Winds and Truth. That's what I'm thinking, right? Of, of this right. new order of Knights. And in this chapter, I believe it's this one, we hear about how they would love to have the, the Ghost Bloods would love to have the ability to control an entire army. Yeah. Kind of like what Mishram did with the singers. Yeah. And I'm thinking that perhaps the wind is going to have that power, and those will be the Knights of Wind and Truth. Ooh, ooh, I like that, actually. That's really good. Yeah, if Mishram did it once, you could do it again, because a lot of people are thinking that the wind is... Is Mishram. Is Mishram. Yeah. 
that's been I don't, corrupted or something. I don't know if that's true yet. Mm. Yeah, I don't know either. However, however <laughs> interesting that we hear this this antidote that there there can be someone that can literally control a whole army of people. Maybe that's what the ghost ones are after. So I think the wind might might be going down that way. But it's also very interesting. It says perhaps it is the new storm. <clears throat> Oh man, the, this the new storm. Maybe this tells us clear that the wind is not their enemy. Yeah, so this clearly tells you that uh, this is written after the events of Book Five, right? So, mm-hmm. one we know that whatever this wind is is going to vanish by the time this book is written. Vanish and is is a female. Yeah, is yeah true. And then there's a new storm, and also the, it's returned at the change of of Odium's vessel, meaning when Taravangian became Odium. Mm. Although we've seen whispers of her voice, we know now, in previous books. So, obviously she plays a much larger role. Uh, but I don't know why why it was when Taravangian took over. Maybe the last guy race had like some sort of trap that well, uh, was cancelled when he died or something. It could be that. It also could be uh, something that's changing with the interaction between the spiritual and physical realm and the cognitive realm. Like maybe those, those walls are getting thinner and it's allowing mm. the voice to come through a little bit more Ooh. possibly because we, we talk about that. And I think even in the opening chapter when Syl and Kyle are talking and so elbows him and he can like barely feel it because of the distance between the two realms. But now I'm wondering if by the end of this book, we see a, a um, you know, it started to degrade, maybe possibly. Do you want to? Do you want to do the the other epigraph so we can build on this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, let's roll down here into the fourth chapter, and it's called listening, which we have listeners, which is interesting. <laughs> uh, I have read that in the ancient days, the wind often spoke to both human and singer. It would then mean that the wind stopped talking, not because of odium, but because of people who began to fear her or to worship the storm instead. I love these epigraphs so far. This one for me is a little harder to pin down. Yeah. Okay. Firstly, whoever's writing this can read like, cause like, Jake was mm. adamant that this is going to be Seth writing this book, but the more I'm reading, I'm, the more I'm thinking it's simply just Kaladin. Yeah, Jake's usually wrong. <laughs> I can't wait to do an episode with all three of us. It's going to be the oh, best. <laughs> it's in my contract. <laughs> Only one uh, host with a name that starts with J. Yeah, yeah. Tr- too many J's. It's just It gets a little uncomfortable, you know what I mean? It does. Yeah. Um, the ancient day. Yeah, so who's... so? Either Cal's learned to read, or he's reading in glyphs, or someone read to him. The wind often spoke to human and singer. Would that mean that the wind stopped talking, not because of odium, but because of people who began to fear her or to worship the storm instead? So, like, people, people are scared of the high, high storm? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, the high storm. So, the high storms are a thing <sighs> that are alive because of the wind. So, they're yeah. probably part of the wind or something like this. And we know people were afraid mm. of the wind. But we also, do we have people that worship the storms as well? I guess, are they talking about the listeners, uh, the singers with the Everstorm? And like, That's what I'm thinking possibly. And like we have to remember, storm? well, the new storm, Not well, this is, clear, this is clearly talking about the change that happened with, with Teravangian becoming Odium, I think. And this is referring to prior to that. So I think the new storm is something that is not related to this. I think this is ex- trying to explain where she was. And now she's back and her voice can be heard. And they're saying, well, maybe her voice faded because of these things. But the new storm, like, what does that look like? You know, and <laughs> like, what is we talked about how Roshar is going to look very different yeah. after book five. We think that there might be a depletion of stormlight. Yeah. Is there a chance that the storms will be the only source of stormlight? I think the storms are going to the stormlight style storms are going to stop. That's what I think this Night of Sorrows is. Okay. There's been a lot of dust foreshadowing, and I think um, it's going to be something with a bit of... It's going to be a rackus. going to be a bit dusty. Um, yeah. Oh, man. I, f- like, I was so ready to record because I'm like, oh, I can speak without coughing, but I'm realizing my cogn- cognitive abilities are way slower. 
<laughs> like each train of thought I have. I'm like, yeah, because the note of sorrows, uh, yeah, Kaladin. <laughs> Caledon. Dalinar, sick, bro. <laughs> no, you're yeah. fine. You're fine. We, we're 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 gonna get through this. I promise. Um, so basically, there's a new storm. The wind is female, it seems, because they say, refer to it as she. And there are people who worship the storm or afraid of the storm. It's most likely the ever storms, but also, uh, something about Odium's vessel restoring her voice. Possibly, there's a change somewhere. Uh, that that's kind of what we're getting at. We don't know who's writing this yet. We don't know who the wind actually is. Maybe the wind truly is just the wind, but a lot of people feel like it's Mitram. Like in the, in chapter four, it's discussed more when wits like it's like, it's like something about a God, like older than the ones you guys currently know. Yes. Like before anyone came to Roshar, there was this, and that's where he also says, I think that Roshar is alive as well, which is pretty big. So maybe we should just go through the chapters now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. And, and kind of take it uh, sequentially as it comes. Yeah. Uh, But we open up chapter three, the cost of heroism talking with Shalon and pattern and kind of talking about, well, her to spread and talking about where veil has gone and radiant pops up and, I don't know. We kind of get a little bit of a reminder about some things that have happened to this point in the series. Yeah, it definitely felt like um, it's it's the recap. Hey, remember when? Remember when, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that scuffle with mum caused yes. bad, bad things to go wrong? <laughs> um, but look, I get it. It's a uh, fifth book in a series and not everyone's like us talking about it weekly. Some probably haven't picked up a book in like, almost four years and they need a little a little refresh having said that though we both kind of expressed like something feels different with the writing uh i don't know if it's just because it's like the first few chapters reading it once a week or there's a lot of exposition to catch us up but we're both a bit like this chapter in particular felt like different in a way that we can't necessarily pinpoint yeah, for me, it was just a little bit jarring because of all the places that it jumps over between being recapped to also getting a lot of exposition from wit. But mm. in that, you know, there is some good stuff trying to explain to us what what and how all these personalities work inside Shalana, where we're at with them. Mm. And it seems like Vale has been a little bit more reduced, right, as she's a part of it. And Pattern is trying to understand it, which I thought was kind of interesting. We also get the detail, which I'm pretty sure we've already known. And I, and I wanted to talk to you about this. Mm-hmm. She knew she had a shard blade long before I'd bond pattern. And she then goes into talking about killing her mother. And I thought it was really interesting. She said she had a friend that came in and wanted to talk to her about it or whatever. And then her mom came at her with a knife to kill her. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so someone, someone was there to try and like sort it out. But mom, mom was like, no, <laughs> we got so i i had a weird i had a weird idea mm-hmm. okay let's just say shallan's mom's not a herald even though it obviously is right i'm just it's very oh on the, okay just just go with me for a second okay, <laughs> okay. yeah testament was her friend a dimpled pattern on the wall that had delighted then engaged then protected a young girl thought this was interesting you know this is what shallan thinks that we're getting it from her perspective right? okay right but what if her mom, what if Testament drove her mother crazy to, and then she went to stab Testament and she stabbed, you know what I mean? Shalon's saying, oh, she's oh, me. What if, Testament, today. what if Testament was manipulating this somehow? Dude, where are these? Where, you've like, you've turned up for wind and truth, honestly. Listen, we got to have some fun. <laughs> We gotta have some fun here. <laughs> and everyone me, knows I've been on the Shalon's mom's a herald theory forever. But it just feels a little on the nose. You know, Testament, a friend whom she'd got done great harm. That was the one thing Shalon clearly remembered. Testament was her friend. And we all know how bad human memory is. It's it's not reliable really at all at mm. this point. So I'm just sitting there thinking, like, hmm, what if Testament wasn't her friend? And what if her mom, you know, is seeing Testament? And it's driving her crazy. Like, what's happening to my daughter? I never considered that she was going for the spring. What if she was going? Mom. It just seems very odd that her mother, even if she was a herald, would try to stab her daughter to death. That seems very out of, out of character for a herald. I mean, they're insane is the point. Is she right. insane at this point, though, you think? Yeah, I okay, think well, so. Maybe, 
I, I mean, so. honestly, like, you're I like right. yours better, to be honest. I really like it. I, really I mean, like so Shalon and Trauma had rejected her nascent oaths and buried those memories. But if her bond with Testament had never been fully broken, what did that mean? In the memories of the days between her mother's death and the arrival pattern, which of those involved Testament? So like, I think that there's a lot of questions about Testament and like Testament's involvement in Shalon mm. and and why Shalon? Why that early? Why is she able to get, do both of them? Which we kind of get asked here, like, hey, how do you have both? And she's like, eh, I don't really know. So I don't know. I just feel like maybe Testament is sus. That's all I'm saying. Man, it's so funny. Like the one wholesome thing that I've latched on to, like, oh, Testament, what a nice spread. It all went wrong for them. I hope they get better. And you're just like, so Testament. Well, Testament's also super forgiving of Shalon for yeah. uh, you know destroying her essentially. So it's like or destroying him or whatever. whatever yeah, uh, they're, like, they're like holding hands and hugging, and it's like very. And I'm just like, hmm, <laughs> is it possible that Testament is forgiving her out of necessity Ooh. for some other motive? Like, can Sprins just do some nefarious stuff? Like, is that within their wheelhouse? I think it is. Yeah, like Fame I think agency. This- I'm like you've sold me on the maybe she was going for the spread, but I don't know if he's if it's like evil testament theory. I just, you still got work to do to get me one over on that one. Well, hey, we'll see. We haven't got yeah. enough testament, obviously, so we're gonna have to we're gonna mm. have to continue. I'm just saying we should keep an eye on it because something's not adding up. And even if her mom was a herald, like I don't know, I don't know why Shalon, why so early, like. There's a yeah. lot of answers. There's a lot of questions that need answered for this. Yeah, and I think that they will all get answered in this book. Um, and also, to be fair, guys, I I am very into perspective reading, meaning that like I like to see what the <laughs> author is using the perspective to accomplish. And I think that there are many times where we should question what we're seeing from a perspective as an unreliable narrator. And that may not unreliable that they're lying, but they're just looking at the situation without all the context or information. And we're going to get to one with Kaladin's chapter as well that I think is really good. Um, that is the these chapters where he talks to his mom, right? Because I read them all at once. Yeah. Okay, uh, this next chapter, no, this next chapter that we're going to do is just the wit chapter. He talks to wit. Okay, great. I'll just dive yeah. into this then yeah. now. Go, go okay, for it, so for it. there's a th- part from chapter two or one or whatever. Kaladin is talking about Harold's in front of his mom. Okay, and I told Chris, I said, hey, man, what about his mom getting a little freaked out by the Heralds? He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, from Kaladin's perspective, he, he starts talking about the Heralds. Okay, and his mom gives him like kind of like a side eye look, like kind of trying to puzzle something out. And in Kaladin's mind, he says, oh, she's just bewildered that her son is rubbing shoulders with Harold so casually. Mm. I read it <laughs> as... Kaladin is not giving enough credence to his mom's past and her mom and her mom and dad, because me and you have talked about this. We talked about Kaladin's mom and being son of Tanavas and all those weird things. Like what is it about Kaladin that makes him special? And then we have questioned greatly his mother. Right. Mm. So I took it as Kaladin is seeing it like that. Cause like he doesn't think there's anything special about his mom, but what if his mom is sitting there looking at him puzzling because she's like, Oh, the heralds are moving. Yeah, hmm, I, I know like something that. about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah now yeah. I might be completely wrong, but I think it's an okay exercise to read in the perspective like that. And this and this Shalon thing is an uh, is you know along those lines. I will say, I think Kaladin's mom having a better idea about the heralds than it appears to Kaladin is probably more likely than Testament being some nefarious <laughs> friend that has got her mom to try to kill Shalon. It's probably not what happened, mm. but we can we can do that because we're in the heads of these characters. Yeah, because in my mind, it's like, I I like was like, oh, Sanderson's just explaining it, so I don't miss like. He and he does do that. He does do that at times. He does explain why characters do things, um, but at other, at other times he does say it as a misdirection, right? Yeah, like the like unreliable we, narrator is very real. Yeah, like how when Jake and I read those chapters, and it was like, oh, he heard Tef's voice in his head, which was definitely not magic. We we're both like it's a hundred percent magic. Like, <laughs> like, like, nice try, Sanderson. Definitely magic. Um, so yeah. So maybe look. The only thing we've had about her is like when Liren met her parents. It was apparently a disaster. Man, if it happens to be like a Herald sitcom scene of them meeting the parents, meet the Heralds or something, 
10 out of 10. What, how would you feel if both Shallan and Kaladin were descendants of Harold's? Mm, my initial reaction is not good. Okay. I've uh, seen a lot of pushback online, just reading like comments and forums yeah. and stuff. Uh, Cause as people reading these chapters, like, man, Kaladin might be honor. And There's so a lot many people are like, Kaladin better not become honor. Like mm-hmm. there are a lot of people who do not want that to come true. I can see why. Because like Kaladin is like a very relatable character to so many people. And you kind of don't, it's like you want him to stay some somewhat like human, you know? And once you're a shard or a god, you've lost a bit of that. Can I be honest? We've also yeah. seen this before. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we have. Like we've seen it. We've seen it. If you've been reading Cosmere, like we've seen this before. Yeah. And it feels like, I don't know. Like, you know, the, you got to do whatever, but it feels a little the, samey. At the same time, I wonder if that's what, if that is like, it becomes less of a shock thing and more of an expected thing in the Cosmere of like, who will the new shards be of our regular old characters? Like who's going to, who's going to form this yeah. new world order? Cause we've already got like a bunch, a few shards who we used to know as regular old humans. So yeah. it could just be like, that's part of the Cosmere story. I think it definitely is. Yeah. But to see another beloved protagonist be, you know, what I, mean? I, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we, we will we see. Will see. Um, we go to the next sus part. And by the way, if there's something that you want to mention, yeah, no, uh, you you'll, you'll help me out a lot this episode, and I appreciate I it. I thought I'd take the reins on yeah, this one. You, well. you need, I'm swimming in my head. <laughs> We're yes, all good. Bro. We're all good, bro. <laughs> okay. So here's some more susness. Um, yeah. <laughs> maybe not sus, but like definitely not the case and it's being stated so okay. i worry about what is to come the ball of light was saying it had transformed into an approximation of wit's face made of soft blue white light and spoke with his voice the spren was a way to contact him as they discovered a few days ago the war is set to intensify and all rest upon the contest of champions odium's chosen warrior versus whoever dalinar chooses and then, of course, this is the part. <laughs> Father will choose himself, Adolin said. When the Blackthorn <laughs> needs a certain something done right, he'll do it himself. Adolin paused and glanced at Maya. Storm him. He probably is our best chance, though. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to I'm just going to be honest. I absolutely despise this line of dialogue. Like I Adolin, bro, Adolin has become like a fourth tier character somehow to me, like. <laughs> Adolin, I loved Adolin in the first two books. Yeah. Third book, yeah. he's pretty good, you know, whatever. And then, like, Rhythm War, I know he has his moment in Maya, all that stuff. But, yeah. like, I started to feel like he got a little lost in the sauce at moments. And, and a lot of people are not going to agree with me, and that's fine. But this, like, Father will choose himself when the Blackthorn needs a certain something <laughs> done right. He I wish I, you guys could see Jimmy. Bro, there is something about this that really irks me. And yeah. I know I sound like a negative Nancy. I'm not meaning to be. But it's just like... I don't I, Look, whatever. I, hey, I'm not that person either, but it's very anime. It's very like, father will do what's right. Stormy, <laughs> I know he'll do the best he can, though. <laughs> it's, Yo, dad. It's, like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not my favorite piece of dialogue. <laughs> and it just hurts because I am really needing something big from Adolin in this book yeah. to get to get me really back invested. Because like, if you look at this scene, I mean, and the people who are talking, it's like Shalon. Like in importance, I think right. it's like Shalon, Wit, Pattern, Testament, and then Adolin. Adolin is almost just like there for say, a sound bite, and, and, which and is crazy. Kalak is above Adolin, I would say, because I'm like I, actually exactly. listening to him. <laughs> I don't know. I I need some more. I need Adolin to take a bigger man. Uh, you know, take um a bigger part of this. But yeah, obviously, <laughs> Dalinar is not going to be the champion. It's obvious, <laughs> right? Yeah, because he's like, of course, it's dead. So let me ask you this. Mm. Is it going to be Adolin? You, you were telling me about this earlier, dude. Let, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Confirmed. What if, what if it's going to be Adolin? Okay, now, I know that there's probably a million reasons why we shouldn't suspect it, because we basically get told <laughs> that we're going to the spiritual realm, and that's where this, you know, that's the road trip for these this group this time. But. Hey, dude. Who lives there? Gods live there. Who's God? Mm. Odium. Who needs a champion? Maybe they, oh, maybe, wow. maybe they, they cross paths and he's like, you know what? You might not be the black thorn, but you're the next best thing. Bam. Hmm. Bam. Not to be confused with Bada Mishram. Just a big, 
make a bare moment for the story. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I just think it's interesting. I, I thought maybe Dalinar will select Adolin, but I don't think he wants to lose Adolin. I mean, the biggest gut punch that we could get is if it ends up somehow being Kaladin and Kaladin fails, <sighs> dies, and then also Dalinar becomes an unmade and it's like this big dark cloud. <laughs> There's literally no chance he's going to end book five like that. I, I don't know. Like, like, I used to be uh, more confident in that, but. I don't know. Unmade corrupted Dalinar is just way too cool to not do yeah it's way too cool it's it's like uh superman whenever he puts on the black suit and there's like uh, the evil clone suit oh man right the best it's just too tempting of a concept he's he's gonna do it at some point who knows how long it will last but i'm so certain we're getting like evil black thorn energy mm-hmm. um but yeah like you're right like adolin is just like in this whole chapter he's just like kind of advancing Side note. Uh, yeah just like oh yeah Uruthiru. um we've mm-hmm. already said like he's just i've got the extra information to keep this conversation going but like and he you know there's a lot of characters so so they are gonna take back seats and points yeah that's fine but yeah. i just i don't know i really want this to be a big adolin book and and I that's my he, own bias speaking so i hope to do yeah and i hope look, he never utters that dialogue ever again <laughs> sanderson's like pretty pretty forthcoming about this he's like dude there's a lot of characters you can't give That's everyone right. like what they deserve because it's going to be really bloated and he's sent certain yeah. characters on their way like rock is off um, on his own journey and like nobody wanted that to happen everyone loves rock so which makes me think if he's if adolin is here something's gonna happen i agree so maybe maybe champion. i agree so. Um, we also get a signpost here because I think we're kind of we're kind of getting a lot of signposts of things to look out for. So mm. obviously Dalinar has to choose a champion. They think it's going to be himself, so it probably won't be. Um, we're hearing about the Ghost Bloods, yep, and what they want, and then we go into a whole bunch of stuff about Bam, aka yeah. Mishram, <laughs> uh, and then we get this here, and I think this is important because me and you have talked about this. Okay, which Shalon said, stepping closer, the glowing version of his face focused on her. My brothers are safe. You're certain? Mm. we have talked about Sean's brothers and how most likely are being influenced by an unmade, right? Yeah. The whole family. I, yeah, I, I like just to re-enter her brothers in the story. is a very significant move, right? Mm-hmm. Cause they've been like nowhere for ages. And the fact that they got returned at the end of the last book stands to the reason we're going to get answers about the family in general. And I think if mom is a herald, we obviously want to see what that means for the brothers too. Um, yes so it's just a little reminder and then the very next line we get another signpost here a very certain brilliant one he said back softly you're sure the ghost bloods will move against you and it's like oh yeah remember the ghost bloods yeah. you know what i mean it's like, yeah. and then we get the marais and a little crew and you know she's basically saying that i am capable of very yeah. dark brutal things and then we get the whole formless idea yeah. right yes another aspect of shalan um, some people like there was a theory going around for a long time that formula formless was the real Shalan and even and Shalan as we know her was another personality that she had made now that it would be sick yeah that would be very cool uh, oh a very gosh. brave thing to do story-wise don't know if that's going to be the case but it would be a very interesting like she's so traumatized that even Shalan as we know her is is a concoction or like a like i don't know what the word is maybe not concoction but like another personality oh man yeah it, it could it could be very interesting to see how that ends up turning out um and we, we get radiant saying i'm proud of you and they talk about her turning away and the cost of heroism and yada 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 yeah. uh, but we move on to this p- interesting piece here it says i have to go wit said but i'll leave you with this thank you wit <laughs> he's gonna give us some good stuff here the ghost bloods want something extremely valuable and you have you have the key to it standing with you right now if you want to destroy them you might not need to kill everyone last every uh last one of them instead you might simply need powerful leverage he's like trade trade in the herald if you must <laughs> just give him kalak and be on your way i, I yeah. get some weird vibes from wit here man um, dude you know because- what i think about what? i think about when he spoke to delano in the way mm-hmm. of kings and he's like you know what bro we may get along but i'd watch this whole planet burn for my own interests if i had to 
I think that that's an interesting tidbit, Christian, because yeah. there seems to be some big wit stuff coming down the pipe. And this is is an interesting piece because we know the conversation that we're going to talk about between um, wit and Kaladin. And basically, Kaladin, I'm never going to see you again, am I, wit? And wit's like, no. And it's very much pointed. It's a, It feels very pointed that yeah. Kaladin is probably going to die. However, <laughs> listen to this line. Okay. The glowing spren shifted from his face back to a sphere. He's gone, the spren said. I'm sorry. His final words lingered with Shalon, reinforcing something she'd been considering. I I don't know. He's gone. I, I, I just I and then like maybe we're never gonna see one another again. And then he talks about being immortal and saying being immortal isn't actually all that meaningful nowadays. Do you yeah. think we see something major with wit here? Yeah, definitely. Like Yes, it's like he's quite shook that uh, about his like. Remember, his last interaction was Taravangian stealing his memories, and at this point, he doesn't realize that it's even Taravangian, or probably that even his memories are lost. He probably just has this weird sense of like, what just happened to me. But even with that considered, he he's racked in weird. Like, yes, as a contest of champions, but he knows obviously, as he always does, more than he's letting on to the audience. And I'm just kind of thinking, like, what is that? Because, yeah, even when he talks to Kalan and he's like, like, haha, imagine if even one of us survives. You're, that's rich. You know? Yeah. Like, so what does he what does he see in the near future? Um, yeah. And also knowing that Kalek is standing here, big leverage. They start asking Kalek, what <laughs> did you guys do? Yeah. And this is great because, like, I feel like a lot of people have no idea about Bam. And he lays it out in a very clear fashion, right? So yeah, like, this will be on the copper mine pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's just like, yeah, we had to trap her, and uh, she's hidden in the spiritual realm, and which is really weird because, like, as the spiritual realm has been described, it doesn't seem like a place you can kind of like walk around with your with your buddies like you yeah. do with Batesma. Like, yeah, it's gonna be very trippy. Um. I liked, I liked that pattern line. What did he say? Uh, he's like, you think Shadesmar is odd? Yes, black sky, little sun, pattern with arms and legs for perambulating. You know what? Sanderson's humor works perfectly for spread like pattern. <laughs> like when yeah. Patton's doing it, it's like quirky and nerdy and silly. And it just hits just right. You know, I'll give him that. That's when I do enjoy the humor. Yes. Um, yes, and uh, t- to to bring it back to collect, right? Uh, yeah, they, he yeah. talks about how they the radiance prepared a flawless um, helidor of the color of sunlight, and they trapped her inside her being Mishram, then hid her prison, not in the physical realm, not in Shadesmar. He bit his lip and forced out another part in the spiritual realm. Um, Malishi, I think that's how you say it, hid yep. it there. And then, of course, Shalon said, how? Collect says, well, I don't know. I promise. <laughs> I promise you. I don't know. But now they'll send people for me, won't they? They'll trap me in a gemstone and they'll think of they'll be able to. He looked to the two of them wide eyed, then fled toward <laughs> uh, fled toward the way down. None of them gave chase. Unfortunately, this behavior was usual for Kellek. M- uh, Maya grunted watching him go. He's gotten a lot worse. You knew him. And then Maya's like, oh, man, him a few times. Then took a deep breath. Never, never thought much of him. Even then. Oh, shade. <laughs> Absolute shade. OK, a few things from this scene. One, and this is such a waste of air, but Sopranos fans, when oh, man. Kalec ran away, I imagined when Uncle June is like going to one of the, one of them, someone dies in the Sopranos, he's going to the yeah. funeral and yeah. then he sees yeah. like the FBI is there and the way he runs away there back to his yeah. car is exactly how I pictured Kalec running away then. I love Which that. In my head, now Kalec is, is Junior. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, he's Uncle June. Uh, oh, okay, so God. that made me happy. The next thing, right, um, a little bit on Malishi. So Malishi was the the last bondsmith who bonded the sibling um, who, and because of everything that happened with trapping Bam and stuff, that's why the sibling was very hesitant to bond Navani and everything. So that's interesting. It was that, it was that person. And it makes sense because bondsmiths can somewhat interact with the spiritual realm. Obviously he's, very advanced to have done that and then then the third thing is obviously like yeah maya like i still okay yeah she's an old spren but like was it common to interact with a herald or is this like a big 
holy crap moment that Maya yeah. is more significant than we realize. Yeah, well, I mean, she would have been around and bonded before the recreants or whatever. So, yeah. like, she probably would have had pretty good. I mean, yeah, I think it was. I think it was a little bit more common. Yeah, right. back then. Well, then, um, why did she think not much of him? Well, we saw he's well, the one he who's like doing something. Uh, it's interesting because he, like, we started the book, like the the Way of Kings, with him like abandoning the Oath Pact. So maybe he was always a little cowardly. You know, maybe we. What if he romanced Mishram back in the day or something? Like turned on her. Mm. Like maybe that's the bigger story here. I don't know. I'm just I'm grasping. The bigger question is what the heck was Mishram before she was an unmade? That's my question. Well, and, yeah, it seems like something that was close to a god because they uh, pattern says power is so much power. She was nearly a god. She bonded the singers once. Could Marais want to do something similar again? It's interesting. Like this friend know know a lot, don't they? Yeah, they need to start yeah. talking more. <laughs> so here's a question for you, Christian. Shalon shivered as she contemplated Marais and his master, Iatil. So I'm a, I'm a little rusty. Who is this master, Iatil? Do we know their their actual per, uh, like real name? Yeah, um, I don't think so. We, it's like she was the. Oh, I remember. Oh, you know what? I'm a bit hazy too. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. a, we, we, yeah we don't even have to answer it like uh, can, he's he name drops her but i don't even know if she like has an appearance to be honest i didn't remember the name that's like, why i was like huh? okay the name i did remember like i pulled it up here on the on the on the cup of mine it says iatil is a world hopper she hails from silverlight in the cognitive realm but lives on roshar in the physical realm she has also been to other unidentified planets her personal background along with her membership in both the seventeenth shard and the ghost bloods presumably give her a very high level of cosmic awareness. So, mm. Mm, very interesting. And he calls her his Babsk, which is we see um, Risen called. Um, oh, what's hers? What's her guy's name? But the old bloke that like trains her, he call, she calls him a Babsk as well. It's like a Thalen word word for like sort of like I don't know teacher. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, I don't. I, Mm, she's got Skadra in her heritage, so she might have a bit of Mistborn thing going on. Maybe she's someone we can look into later. There's a lot of info here. Yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be plenty to look into. Um, and just to kind of touch on the spiritual realm, by the way, it is a place where the future blends with the present, where the past echoes like a striking of a clock, time and distance stretch like numbers infinitely repeating. It is where gods live, and it baffles even some of them. This is huge because we get this feeling, especially from Wit and the way that he is talking, that the past is very misunderstood in Roshar, yeah. or at least very undiscovered. And knowing that we're gonna go somewhere where the past echoes like the striking of a clock. And knowing that it's kind of interesting that that ver the way that he worded that, considering that like there will be a time struck where it's time for the champion battle. Mm. And I feel like maybe it's all going to kind of coincide and come together like that. But uh, I think that this is a book where we're going to get even more context about Roshar, which at this point, I mean, it is feeling like we are so deep. We've drilled so deep into the lore. Like, yeah, you start out. Roshar's bizarre. Yeah. We're at Shattered Plains. And then we, you know, we get the flip script, you know, oh, humans were actually the invaders and they colonized. And then, you know, obviously we end up seeing the Parshmen. All this stuff happens, right? Yeah. And then we find out, well, the Heralds and there's Nice Radiant coming back. Okay, mm. that's actually pretty sick. But then we find <laughs> out about, you know, more about Shadesmar. And then, okay, we got to go to a Spren, right? Spren are completely different than what we thought they were. So we're constantly learning new things. Mm. And I really did not expect, I knew we would be learning things and getting answers in book mm. five, but it feels like we're going down another layer <laughs> with the past. And it's just, I'm not saying I'm, uh, I don't like it. I'm just saying it's a lot. Like, wow. It is a lot. It's it's exciting that there's still more to uncover. But Tons. you're like, is is this the last layer? Or is there even like one more? <sighs> always another secret, more, right? There's five more books. And one thing from our perspective, especially you, someone that makes theories and talks about like possibilities, I almost feel like a lot of the possibilities of this book, we didn't even have the context to make those guesses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we had no idea. We had a, like the wind. I'm so I'm so pleased we picked up on that. Oh, yeah, we're geniuses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one more victory life, Jimmy. Just one more. <laughs> yeah, just up in my fist, you know. I'm, I'm the guy that's spraying the champagne at a kid's competition on the uh, <laughs> That's me. Let me tell you something, dude. If the wind 
was like an original god of Rosha, like as you know, in chapter four we hear it's like a, a part of Adonalsium that has lived on. I'm telling you right now, the stones are the other part of that equation. Like if, with if, bro, out a doubt. Bro, if the stones are <laughs> it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's an absolute wrap. Um so let's look at this chapter because I you know what? I'm I I learned a lot through your notes on chapter three because I was like, Yeah, pretty good. Uh they're going to the spiritual uh, realm. It's nice things to think about, right? But yeah, but I'm just saying the next chapter I was like furiously typing um with a bunch of a bunch of theories and a bunch of thoughts um so this is basically a very ex- a long extended conversation with wit and we're led to believe that it's because dalinar is in a meeting and then we get the the comedic moment at the end where dalinar was actually waiting for kaladin and wit's kind of it's weird i don't think we're going to see wit much at all in this book because don't you get the sense like he's told Shalan his last message, he told Kaladin a last message, and we find out he also had been speaking to Dalinar with like some final words. We I will see. He, I mean, we'll see him, but we might not see him to the end of the book. Yeah, I think he's getting out of Dodge real quick. Like he's about to duck out of Roshar. Mm. That's that sense I get. Do you think? Do you think he's chasing somebody that's leaving Roshar? Hmm. Well, he's like the whole lore of Wit is like he kind of pops up where he's needed mm-hmm. to some degree. So you would imagine because of so much being kicked off here in Rosha, he's going to be around, but the way he's yeah. talking kind of gives me the sense that he's not going to be around, which makes me wonder where the hell is he going? Uh, of course I could be way off and he is just going to be around. Um, but we, again, with this conversation, so much law, so many throwbacks to the way of Kings. And this was another thing I loved and I'm, I'm interested to hear what we said when we read this chapter, actually, the Wanda Sale chapter, where Wit talks about, he's like, didn't you hear the, the music repeating itself uh, when I was playing Wanda Sale to you? And then Sil's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It wasn't me. And then you find out it's the rhythm of Rosha. Like he was playing that in that scene. And then the wind was singing it back. And we thought it was just like echoing in the chasms. We picked up on that. We talked about that too. So I'm curious to hear that conversation. But yeah, we uh, we <clears throat> caught it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Of course we did. Um, but it just makes me. It just I don't know. I just love this idea of like the rhythm of Rosha being omnipresent and and in the story since very early on, and even in a chapter that's held as being really important and iconic we're learning new stuff about it but okay this is where i'm just gonna go straight into one of my theories that i'm that i want to brew here with you a little bit okay so at the end oh god there's like so many sus lines but okay at the end it's kind of like we're sending kaladin off and we can talk about it a bit more um oh come on get organized christian jeez son Where's Get it together, line? bro. Yeah, I just, how dare I? It's literally prime have time. The flu. <laughs> I know. The wind of truth has dropped, and I'm like, Ugh. okay. Here is it. Where is it? Okay, okay, okay. You got, got it. Guys, be patient. Jeez. All right. Exactly what it said. Now go. The world needs the two of you more than you or it or anyone other than your humble wit yet realizes. The fight ahead of you will be legendary. Unfortunately, you can't fight this one with the strength of muscle you'll have to wield the spear another way good luck right and we know i always harp on about this but the chapter headings are scenes that are later in the book um that are zoomed in so you can't tell what they're about and obviously kaladin's chapter has the spear with the flag on it and other spears around him with the crescent moon and that's exactly what I thought of when he's like, you'll have to wield the spear another way. And when I look at Kaladin's chapter heading, uh, his chapter icon, I kind of get like, it's like a rallying cry. It looks like he's inspiring others to, to follow to some degree. And Wit says um, this very sus line, which I'm sure you you picked up on as well, where he goes... We're at the end, Kaladin, and you are needed. I want you to march off t- to your divine destiny. 
with a spring a little on the nose a little bit (laughs) a little bit on the nose uh but yeah divine destiny use the spear in a different way it and like you know becoming your world's first therapist bit of a joke but like it (laughs) kind of feels like kaladin's going to be turned into this inspirational figure um some sort of mythical thing right like he's ascending to some yeah Big all time. signs point towards that i think and something with sill too did you like because he says like thank you for the inspiration wit said straightening and looking to kaladin then to sill then smiling in a fond yet somehow regretful way like you guys are screwed <laughs> or like well you- we've said that maybe the biggest thing would be if Sil were to perish, or maybe they just move on to new s- stages, you know, Sil becoming the Storm Mother and Kaladin taking up mm-hmm. honor or something, you know, like we could definitely see them not being together at the end of this book, especially because the book opens with them being in good moods, being together. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And 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 like when Wit talks about the wind, it's like he used to know her. Very, familiar, mm-hmm. very familiar tone, like extremely familiar. Yes. Um, and then when they're trying to kind of dig for more information, he's like, well, I'm not going to spill her secrets. That's up to her. This guy, he's just involved in everything, isn't he? <sighs> <laughs> tell us. Yeah, honestly, you're telling us quite a bit. Can't you tell us more? And he's like, and he's saying like, you, you're not going to come back and you're not going to help Dalina no matter what he thinks. He's fully aware of some grand plan with Kaladin. He's he fully does. aware of it. Dude, he was playing. So think about it. He was playing one to sail to Kaladin with the freaking rhythm of Rosha going on. And he, and he passes on this flute to him. Yeah. And the flute and then the singing, like there, there's a lot of musical stuff here. A lot of tones, a lot of tones, a lot, a lot of rhythms. One might say with a war on the horizon. That's the best I can do this week, guys. It's as good as it's getting from me. Um, <laughs> But look, very, extremely foreboding stuff. Like, when Wit's panicked, you know it's bad. Um, and it's interesting, like, I'm not really getting a sense of, like, Seth being all that important at this point in the book. I know we're only four chapters in, but I thought, like, Kaladin... Did, isn't Kaladin aware that he's going with Seth? Does he know? He knows that, right? He... Yeah. I actually don't remember. I thought, I thought so. I thought yeah. so. Um, yeah. I think we have a lot of time. Like, yeah. you have to keep in mind that the yeah. four chapters, like, Zeth is, is going to have a, his own arc oh, in this book, majorly, I think. But mm. you do get the feeling that this is a goodbye of some sorts and that Wit is seeing beyond this. Now, mm. one of the weird things is like, like, okay, a lot of people get mad when we say, like, Kaladin is special, but like, <laughs> how does Wit know all of this about Kaladin? Mm. Well, because he says, like, I was drawn to you because you gave yourself a second chance. But, like, and he probably was, but I kind of believe, I don't believe that that's the only reason (laughs) that he was drawn to Kaladin. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's got to be a bit more going on, right? Beyond just, like, bonding as friend and being a nice radiant. Obviously, Syl's important too, Miss Ancient Daughter. Like, there's a lot of, like... Well, she even says, I think in this, or maybe it's in the first chapter, she says, I was like the equivalent of a princess. <laughs> yeah. Huh? <laughs> That's what I mean. There's got to be some sort of secret lineage or it's like some secret plan with Kaladin and like the wind has been talking to him for so long. Maybe it's yeah. not a blood relation thing. It's like they picked him for some divine purpose. I don't know. Um, it says... I'm sending you off, Kaladin, hoping that if the wind spoke to you, then some piece of that ancient deity is watching because when everything feels wrong, all I can do is hope. So when he's talking about ancient deity, he's talking about Adonalsium. So they're saying like when they killed Adonalsium, that first like all-encompassing god, obviously created the the 16 shards, but obviously those other like mini shards, um, I don't know, there's probably going to be a whole new category invented for things like the wind, right? yes and uh, it's it's kind of related to old magic yeah he's like that's the term we're using for it it's like old magic yeah so old magic is just seems to be other leftovers from this initial calamity of uh killing adenalsium um so there's obviously going to be more than just the wind and i wonder mm-hmm. if it's going to be like 
we recontextualize contextualize like the mist in Mistborn, even though we, we kind of get a lot of info about that. I wonder if other things will oh, now be in that same category, Whoa. Whoa. you know, probably. I mean, on Roshar, everything's up. You know, I mean, yeah. we know the stones are, are going to be sentient or some madness. I mean, we've been that's like our biggest thing. I know we get a, we have a lot of things, but like the thing that I have felt the most convicted about is the stones. Yeah. So I will feel so <laughs> victorious if that's the case. But you're right, man. That would be a crazy like Cosmere implication thing. And like you go back and read Miss Born Arrow one and realize that the miss is something totally different than you thought or there's more to you know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. Like aspects of the world themselves have some sort of role to play it's very yeah. cool like it's just cool world building um and i guess we're left scratching our heads to some degree because we're only four chapters into a, a 1300 page book um man gold gods older than yours wit said from beside Kaladin. hmm very cool very cool always another secret and side note wit was just reading a uh you know, a rom-com on the couch before Kaladin came. So this guy. Yeah, he, interesting, right? He's all over the place. <laughs> he's all over the bloody place. Oh, dude. If there's anything else you wanted to mention, mention it now. I think I've reached my mental capacity. I'm not usually like this, guys. But oh, I'm you're fine, bro. I mean, the, the, the funny <laughs> thing is that we're only on chapter three and four, and we are having like maybe everything in the Cosmere has been alive this whole time. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's kind of wild, but we got a lot of characters to still to get to Adolin. Uh, obviously I'm wanting a lot from him in this book, but there's plenty of time for that to happen. Uh, and Zeth will definitely have his, his day. I think so. I think it'll be a really good time mm-hmm. going through these. I'm excited because all literally every chapter so far he's read at some point, or even if it's just a bit of a chapter, he's read all of these. So whilst these have, been somewhat new to me i also kind of known what i'm getting next week's the first week where it's like i have no idea what chapter yeah. five and six hold so i'm very i'm very excited i guess you know thinking about it though it's all gonna be this whole first section is just shallan and kaladin right yeah but who knows how long this section will be it's just day one maybe they'll be shorter because jake and i um were wondering like maybe day 10 is like early in the book you know, maybe day one to 10, it just constitutes part one of this book. You know, we don't know what the structure mm-hmm. is anymore. It's a good point. So like, who knows how long Kaladin and Shalane, I, I don't know. It can't last too long, I think. Like we've got a lot of people to check in with. Well, we're going to see a lot of them through their eyes too, right? Mm. And like how much can happen in day one, really? <laughs> well when you're going into the spiritual realm we're past uh, and present and future all kind of intertwined you never know man we're gonna be like these were it is gonna age like milk these like chapter discussions yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> like <laughs> this, it'll be fun though. yeah it will be fun Alrighty, guys. Well, thank you again for accompanying us on this episode of Lost in Roshar. Remember, the most important chapter a man can read is the next one. We'll see you next time as we jump into chapters five and six of Wind and Truth. And if you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, be sure to leave us a review on whichever platform you listen on. And if you have questions or theories, please span read us at lostinroshar at gmail.com. We'll see you next time on Lost in Roshar. And please, folks, remember to keep that safe hand covered. And also, safe hand was mentioned in these chapters. Just saying... (laughs) just saying